The Art of Magic, written by Rarity, with a little help from Giddy Goose 863 and Firespark. Warning, where you are about to read is a horrified story, a story of death, gore, and twisted characters. Read at your own risk. Magic, a powerful thing, one mastered by the unicorns. Yet, its origin is surrounded in mystery. Some things are best left untold. It was six years after the royal wedding between Princess Cadence and Shining Armor and once again a beautiful day in the land of Equestria. From east to west, all ponies were happy, but in the plains around Ponyville there was one pony who was quite nervous. Today was a very special day, but also the hardest. Are you ready, sweetie? asked Rarity with a caring voice. Sweetie sighed and said with her usual voice crack, It is now or never, sis. Sweetie concentrated so hard her horn started to glow green, she wanted to unleash a powerful blast, a beam of pure magic. Sweetie closed her eyes, bit her lips, and hoped for the best. A green orb came o over her horn. She was almost there, almost. A loud bang was heard, and Sweetie was thrown a couple dozen feet backwards. Rarity rushed to Sweetie and asked, Sweetie, where does it hurt? Surprisingly, sis, nowhere. The grass is quite soft and the ground isn't that hard either. But sis, how? How could it fail? I passed everything except the blast, says Sweetie, a, a little disappointed in her voice. Rarity smiled to her little sister and said, Give us some time, Sweetie, then you can do it. I shall give you an example of a pure blast. Watch and learn, sister. Rarity went a couple feet away from Sweetie, concentrated herself, bit her lips, and in no time a bright blue orb came over her horn. She pointed her horn in the air and blasted it away. It was a wonderful sight to see, one powerful beam of pure blue magic shooting in the skies, becoming millions of sparkles, who slowly fall back to the ground. After a minute, the beam faded away, and Rarity shook her head a couple of times and said, Wow, that must have been the biggest blast I have ever given. Sweetie looked in awe of what she saw and wanted to try again. May I try again, sis? she asked. If you feel you can do it, sweetie, go ahead, said Rarity as she laid in the grass. Sweetie prepared herself again. She concentrated herself harder than ever before, bit her lips and waited. Her horn sprouted some magic, but then the orb came. Come on, come on, Sweetie kept saying, and there it was, the blast, the blast of pure green magic. Brady looked in awe this time. Her sister did it. She passed all the tests they can give you. Sweetie's future was secured. The beam of magic disappeared, and Sweetie couldn't believe it. Did I? Did I really do it, sis? Did I just blast pure magic? She asked in disbelief. Rarity got up and hugged Sweetie. Yes, Sweetie, you did it. You really did it. Sis, uh, I feel so lightheaded, a little lightheaded. Is this how it feels when you are drained? Rarity nodded and said, The blast of pure magic is the most powerful blast a unicorn can give, but it drains a lot of your magic. You do know why I taught you all this, right? You taught me this for the unicorn tests. To see if I have what it takes to call myself a true unicorn or a half unicorn, says Sweetie. That is right. To call yourself a true unicorn, you have to pass everything, including the blast. I have faith in you, Sweetie. You did it here. Today, you can also do it when they test you, said Rarity with a smile on her face. Now, how about we go home boat and both take a bath, have some dinner, and go to bed, said Rarity. Sweetie nodded to that, and together they went back to the carousel boutique. True unicorn, half unicorn, or the third kind. There is no other way. After two weeks, it was time. Finally time for Sweetie to prove she was a true unicorn. She practiced and practiced until she was pretty much all drained from her magic. And every time she tried it, she did it. Then came the day, the day she had to prove it. Rarity brought her to a place where she had never has been before. It was a Ponyville or Canterlot. It was a place that gave her the shivers. Rarity noticed and said, No need to panic, sweetie. You will succeed. You did it so many times already. I have faith in you. Sweetie sighed and said, I know, sis, but this place, so cold, so heartless. I just don't like it here. Rarity smiled and said, Soon you will be out of here, sweetie. Now I have to leave you alone for now, since family isn't allowed in this area when they begin. And just after Rarity said that, a siren sounded, saying that every family member had to leave. Sweetie saw how all the parents, brothers, and sisters left. They were There they were, all the little fillies and young adult mares and colts who had to do the test. Sweetie fell on her behind and sighed. 
hoping for the best. She knew that if she didn't perform the blast, she would disappoint Rarity so much. She was determined to go after her sister to become a true unicorn. One by one, the little unicorns were called, but Sweetie was one of the last. A filly around her age walked up to her and said, Hey, my name is Twinkle Sparkle, and what is your name? Sweetie was pleasantly surprised by this and said, The name is Sweetie Belle, but just call me Sweetie. Sweetie Belle, aren't you the sister of Rarity? Twinkle asked. That's right, Rarity is my big sister. Wow, I'm the little sister of Twilight. She may not have mentioned me since she is always too busy with her studies. Something I never understood of her. Oh well, what can you do? Sweetie giggled a little since she knew how Twilight was. It is nice to meet you, Twinkle, said Sweetie. Same here, Sweetie, said Twinkle. The longer time passes, the emptier the hall became. Every pony went into a hallway, but never got back again. But the two fillies talked about a lot of things and didn't really pay much attention to it. Until a masked colt unicorn said, Twinkle Sparkle, your turn. If you would follow me, please. Twinkle stood up and went with the masked colt never to be seen again. Then after some time, the masked coal returned and said, Sweetie Belle, your turn. If you want to follow me, please. Sweetie stood up and went with the colt. She went down the hallway only to enter an arena. In the middle, there were three unicorns with notepads writing down things with their magic. One of them, a mare, looked her in the eyes and spoke, Sweetie Belle, born in Ponyville. No cutie mark yet, but still searching for it. Is this information correct? Sweetie looked the mare in the eyes and said, That's Craig, madam. Oh, and well-mannered as well. This test will judge your future, sweetie. It has come to my ears that you have been practicing over and over for this. Well, these are your tests. Lift up some objects. Start with the smallest and slowly work your way up to the biggest object you can lift. Then you need to put up some defensive spells like a shield or a barrier. Once you have done that, you need to do a blast of pure magic. Begin when you are ready. All three of the judges looked at Sweetie, who looked at the audience. There was no pony to be seen. It was just her and the three judges. This caused Sweetie to her nerves. She couldn't hold herself anymore and started to shake. Yet she performed the tests. But thanks to her nerves, she failed the first one. She couldn't even lift the first weight. The judges shook their head and wrote things down. Then was the defensive test. Sweetie tried her best, but the best thing she could do was a weak, fragile barrier, not capable of holding anything. The judges again shook their heads and wrote things down. Then came the last test. Sweetie sighed deeply and tried her best to perform the blast. She concentrated herself hard, bit her lips, and hoped. A hope that soon faded away after an enormous explosion. Sweetie was sent against the wall of the arena. She was still by knowledge, however. The mayor judge said, You had disappointed us, Sweetie Belle. We heard you trained so hard for this, yet you failed on everything. I'm sorry to say this, but you are not you are unworthy to be a unicorn. This broke Sweetie's heart. She failed the tests, no retries, no nothing. She just failed. Failed at life. Failed to make her sister proud. Take her away, said the mayor. Two mass unicorn colts came forward and grabbed her, dragging the filly to an elevator. When all hope seems lost, give it up. Once you are there, all hope is lost. When Sweetie and the mass colts entered the elevator, it went down a long way down. Until the door opened, all Sweetie saw was the box that was the elevator. The doors finally opened and Sweetie stared into darkness. Then lights went on as she saw she was in some sort of prison. Hundreds of jail cells she saw as she tried to break out of the hold of the colts, but their magic was too strong. Sweetie noticed something about their magic. It was red. Blood red. As the mass colts dragged her to her cell she heard Phillies crying calling their parents but also she saw some of the young adults curled up and sobbing she was thrown in a cell with another filly the masked colts closed the door and went away back to the elevator sweetie shook her head and looked at the blueberry filly T -t twinkle was all sweetie could say yes yeah, sweetie it is me i failed i tried my best but i was too nervous i failed everything I disappointed my sister, my mother, my father, my brother. I disappointed my whole family, said Twinkle, through her sobbing. I had the same Twinkle. I was too nervous as well, said Sweetie as she sat next to a curled up Twinkle and started to sob herself and curled up around Twinkle trying to comfort her. 
From time to time, the same two masked colts returned dropping new ponies and took ponies away. No pony knew to wear. For those who stayed longer than a day, there was good food and drinks. Sweetie and Twinkle didn't know for how long they stayed there. Days? Weeks, maybe? But it felt like years. Sweetie, do you think we will ever leave this place? We have been longer than any pony else. As Twinkle scared, I truly have no idea. I wish I knew, though. Oh, Rarity, where are you? Don't you miss me? Says Sweetie, scared as well. Both of them curled up against each other and sobbed in their misery. After a couple of hours, the masked colts came in again. This time they went to Sweetie and Eat and Twinkle. You two, come with us. It is time for you, said one of them. The masked colts used their blood-red magic to tie the fillies and drag them to the elevator. The doors opened and they went inside. The doors closed and there they were again, the elevator where it all started. But this time it was different. The scent of death hung in the elevator. The doors opened again, but inside, but instead of an arena, they saw a parking lot. An abandoned parking lot. Sweetie and Twinkle got blindfolded and were sent in a chariot. That brought them Celestia knows where. All they knew was that it was long. A very long trip. But not a single word was spoken. Only soft sobbing and sniffling. After some time, Sweetie broke the silence and spoke. Rarity, where are you? Have you forgotten about your little sister? Rarity, please wake me from this nightmare. But this, this wasn't a dream. This was real. Twilight, shining armor, mother, father, have you forgotten me as well? Said Twinkle through the tears. They must have been looking for us, right? I mean, we were gone for weeks, said Sweetie in an attempt to calm herself. But then the chariot stopped. The driver got the two fillies out of it and took off their blindfolds. It was deep in the night. Sweetie looked to the driver again, a masked colt. Then she looked at the building where Twinkle already looked at, and with an open mouth, her mouth fell open again as well. Where are we? asked Twinkle. I have no idea, Twinkle, answered Sweetie. In front of them was a building, enormous, scary looking. Screams could be heard, pistons jammed, gears cranked, steam left the many parts on the sides of the building, and on top one big chimney which every once in a while shot a bolt, a bolt of something, the smell, unbearable. When Sweetie and Twinkle smelt it, they nearly had to puke, the smell of ponies being burned. After a loud thunder roll and a nerve bolt of something shot in the sky, a bolt of lightning came rushing down, revealing the size of the dark building. It was bigger than what they thought. It was black, white, blood red. Now the fillies know that all their hope was all lost. They looked to the ground and saw that they were standing on a cloud, a massive cloud. Yet, the building was made of solid metal, and all like Cloudsdale, where the houses are made of clouds as well. They were brought inside by the driver who held them with his blood-red magic, through a long hallway which went through the whole building. Sweetie and Twinkle looked through some of the windows, dead unicorns, locked-up unicorns, everything was there. They came to yet another elevator which brought them to their cells. The Art of Magic, a terrible truth, a truth many know, but don't live on to tell it. As Sweetie and Twinkle were dropped in their cell, countless screams were heard, countless pistons which came down with a crushing speed, gears that broke bones, steam which burned unicorns, and unicorns who passed away were simply used, burned, to keep the boilers running. Not even their ashes were spared. Every. Single. Bit burned until there was nothing left. Unlike the last place, here, they were in a big, one big cell, with around twenty other fillies and young adults. Sweetie took a look around while the door closed, and they were finally freed from the blood red magic. She saw tubes going all over the place, but couldn't see what was in them, maybe for the better. She saw a cat walk walking high above them. She looked to the ground, only the hallway, locked on both sides, with heavy metal doors, but the sounds, they went through marrow and bone, and again, they were left the for Celestia knows how long. The food was worse than the first prison, but still acceptable. What do you think they're going to do to us? Twinkle asked. Kill us, that is certain, said Sweetie. And then, one day, a couple of figures walked on the catwalk, all masked, wearing black suits, covered in blood. But Sweetie and Twinkle could make out three ponies, their coats. 
One was white, one was blue, and the last one mulberry. The pony with the white coat spoke, So, you all failed your tests. You are all unworthy unicorns, but you aren't useless. The unicorns were always the smallest in numbers, but always the most powerful ponies. Let's do a simple quiz, shall we? Who of you can tell me where does magic come from? One of the ponies in the cell answered, It is inside of us. It always has been. They tell me that in school. The white-coated pony started to laugh, and so did the other two. The blue one said, That is what they teach you, because we tell them to do so. If we told them where it really came from, things would shake the world, so to say. Sweetie and Twinkle somehow remembered something in those three ponies. They couldn't tell what, but they just remembered them. Another question. Why did you all fail your tests? Were you all scared? Nervous? said the mulberry-coated pony. All of the fillies and young adults nodded. Then they got the scare of their life. One piston dropped so hard it shook the whole facility. Piston 412 has problems again. Fix it, said the white-coated pony to one of the masked colts who went away. The blue-coated pony spoke. Since this will be your last stop, you want to know where you are now, right? Well, the pony started to smirk. You are in the magic facility. You may have never heard of it because it is the best kept secret in Equestria. Not even the princesses know of it. And now we want to introduce ourselves to you misfits, said the white-coated pony. The blue-coated pony removed her mask, only to reveal a pony, a face every pony knew. It was no pony else than Trixie. Her mane was filled with red, messy, and simply unclean. The mulberry-coated pony removed her mask, only to give Twinkle the scare of her life. That pony who stood there on the catwalk was her sister, Twilight Sparkle. She simply couldn't believe it. Her sister, working in a place like this, Twilight's pink stripe in her manes and tail became, had become blood red, and she too had blood strains all over her body. And then it was the white-coated pony's turn. She removed her mask, and Sweetie was devastated. The white-coated pony was her sister, Rarity. Rarity was leading this infernal place. No, sis, this can't be true. This cannot be, shouted Sweetie to Rarity. Rarity looked at her. Her manes weren't purple anymore. They were blood red, and her coat also had blood stains all over her body. Why are you doing this? You are my sister, Rarity. Don't you love me anymore? This filled Rarity's eyes with rage. I do love you, sweetie. Why else do you think I helped you so much? I wanted you to pass, so you didn't have to end up here. I fate I wanted to spare you, but now you are marked as an unworthy unicorn. There is little I can do. Twilight, shall we? asked Trixie. Twilight smirked and started to kiss Trixie deeply. Rarity saw the two and was pretty annoyed. Ugh, this again... Let's that look that you love each other fine, but do it in private, will you? You two are my greatest spies by the princesses, to keep sure they won't figure this out. But please keep that to yourself, will you? Trixie and Twilight broke the kiss and stood next to Rarity. Tomorrow you will all be magic misfits, said Trixie with a smile on her face. As Sweetie looked through the tears that had been building up, she saw that all their eyes were blood red as well. But still, that her sister, her sweet sister, ran this place. It devastated her. She fell to her behind, curled up, and just cried, as many of the others already did. Twinkle just stood there, looking to her sister with one thought going on. This cannot be real. Twilight, Trixie, and Rarity went away. Only the masked colt stayed to keep the peace between the prisoners. Eventually, Twinkle curled up as well and started to sob. Once in, there is no way back, not until you are fully used. Magic, a terrible thing, yet it does so much good. Sweetie, is this all really real? Twinkle asked, scared, who finally came out of her curl. I wish it wasn't real, Twinkle, but I tried everything I know to weigh myself up. It is real, said Sweetie as the tears collected in her eyes. Soon, we are no more. Used, burned to keep this place running. Now Sweetie couldn't hold herself any more. She cried many, many tears. Twinkle tried to comfort her, but it didn't work. Sweetie's heart was broken, taken out of her body, frozen and smashed against the wall, into a thousands of pieces. 
Her sister and one of her best friends were in this place. Sweetie couldn't just couldn't wrap her head around it. She starts to sob, loudly and scream in pain, and soon other ponies followed her example and cried and screamed in pain. On the very top of the facility, Rarity sat behind her desk. She looked into her office, grim, covered in blood, but that was how she liked it the most. She took a look to the left and she saw the inside of the chimney, blasting something away every once in a while, and she smiled almost devilishly when she saw the bolts going up. She looked in the front of her. A heavy metal door separated her from the rest of the facility, on the wall's bloodstains as far as the eye could reach. To her right, one big glass window overlooking the top floor, the floor where it all happened. She went off her chair and took a look inside the top floor. She only smiled at the sight. She went back to her desk and turned herself to the back wall, which was filled with television screens on which she saw every single inch of her facility. Her blood red irises scanned each monitor and smiled by one. It was an unworthy unicorn colt, cut open. Undone from his blood, all tied up, unable to move, to die horribly. Rarity turned around and opened the top of her desk to reveal the control panel to the of the whole facility. Let's see what you still got in you, darling, Rarity said and pushed a button and turned back to the screen. She saw how the metal arms came down, each having syringes and long tubes. The unworthy unicorn looked up and started to cry. This is what Rarity hoped for. So, you still have some left, she said, and the arms jammed the syringes into the poor pony and started to suck him empty. He was undone from all his flowing juices in his body and dried on the spot. One last tear wasn't even granted. As the arms took the syringes out and went up again, two mass unicorn colts came and grabbed the dead pony, brought his corpse to an elevator, and went downstairs. Brady looked at an another monitor, and there they were, boiler room three. The mass colts threw the unicorn into the boiler, which slowly burned him to nothing. A powerful cloud of steam left the chimney of the boiler, and the pistons and gears worked harder. Rarity just smiled at her work. Twilight came into the office. You wanted to see me, Rarity? Yes, Twilight. Would you bring number 1542 and number 1543, please? asked Rarity. Twilight nodded and went to the holding cell. The cell where Sweetie and Twinkle sat. She peered on the catwalk and said, Sweetie Belle and Twinkle Sparkle, come with me. Before any of the two could resist, Twilight used her blood red magic to tie the two fillies, shut their mouths, and brought them up. She brought them to Rarity, where they were left alone in the grim office. Rarity was looking at the monitors, but suddenly she turned around and looked right into Sweetie's and Twinkle's eyes. This wasn't the Rarity Sweetie knew. This was a monster, her blue irises gone, replaced with red ones, and a look which always stood on murder. You two misfits are the worst we ever had. You could have passed, the both of you, but you were too nervous to do it. That is why you are unworthy unicorns. We have no use for you. Only one. Rarity pointed to the chimney, and the fillies looked only to see a bolt of something going up and under a loud thunder roll moved itself out of the chimney. That is the only purpose you have here. Rarity started to chuckle. Sweetie and Twinkle shivered in fear and they got to scare their lives again when the door opened and Trixie was standing there and said, Rarity, it is time again. Rarity looked from the fillies and up to Trixie and said, Good Trixie, suit up and make sure every misfit in the facility can see it. And take these two with you. I don't want to see them anymore. Not before it's their turn. Yes, Rarity, said Trixie, and, said, and before Sweetie or Twinkle could say anything, their mouth was shut again and they were tied up together, much to Trixie's pleasure. She brought the fillies back to their cell and suited up in her black bodysuit, as did Twilight and Rarity. In the magic facility, where they are waiting for you, for you and you alone, the misfits of our race, soon enough, darlings, Will your suffering be over? In all the holding cells, screens were made by mass colts. Every pony looked at them, but first they saw nothing. Then a crystal clear image came up. Three mass ponies in black bodysuits stood there. The middle one spoke. Greetings, unworthy unicorns. You might ask yourself, why are you here? There is only one reason why you are here, 
to become magic. Let me explain this further, in person. All three of the ponies removed their masks, only to reveal Rarity, Twilight, and Trixie. Sweetie and Twinkle didn't look up anymore at that sight. They knew their sisters were gone, too far gone to return. Trixie spoke. Thousands of years ago, the unicorn's race had no magic. They were just... Trixie shivers in disgust. Earth ponies with a horn. Nothing more. But after many, many years, the unicorns found a way to make magic with the help of blood and tears. The first unicorns were very specific about the recipe of magic, but many years later, the magic that was stored started to run out. That is why the tests were made to see which unicorn was worthy to hold magic, said Twilight, and all who failed were brought here. Well, not really, but you get the point. This facility is only 2,000 years old. The only one of its kind, it is here, where the unworthy unicorns of today are brought and transformed into magic. You're probably wondering what that bolt of something is, right? Said Rarity, and a slowly and evil grin came to her blood-covered face. That is a bolt of pure magic that leaves with every blast going to a couple of true and half-unicorns to resupply their magic. A unicorn can call up the magic guest, but can't make it his or herself. That is where the facility comes into play. The facility restores the magic of the unicorn overnight. Rarity walked to an unworthy unicorn who was strapped in a chair, and Twilight and Trixie made themselves ready as by some lever levers. Now look, this is the old way of making magic. A way we still use to honor the first unicorns, but we have a way that goes faster, which you will see soon enough. And Rarity would put on some goggles. Twilight, Trixie, if you please. When they see it, it doesn't need an explanation. Trixie and Twilight nodded, and Twilight pulled her lever causing metal arms with syringes and tubes to come down. The unicorn started to cry. Rarity nodded to Trixie, which pulled her lever. The arms jammed their syringes in, violent. Even the tear tubes didn't stay safe and got a syringe plunged into them. Most of the fillies were horrified and started to cry. Rarity walked away from the unicorn to one last lever and pulled it. Slowly, the unworthy unicorn was undone from its blood, and all of its tears were being sucked out. Now all the fillies in the facility were crying, screaming, much to Rarity's delight. She slowly started to grin devilishly, from the sound and the sight. Twilight spoke again. Once the blood and the tears are fully taken away, we don't need you anymore. We could let you go, of course, but then you will talk about this place. So, you stay here, until you pass away. Either you do it yourself, or we do it. Then we throw you in the, one of the boilers only to make the facility run faster. Twilight starts to laugh, and Trixie had one last explanation. Then we mix your blood, and tears, and something we call sea jam, the only magical flower in the whole of, of Equestria. And that flower alone isn't enough to make magic. If we add everything in one big drum and start mixing, it will become pure magic. After that, it shoots to a random chosen worthy unicorn. Soon you will all be used for the greater good. The good, no, the need of the unicorns. And with those words, the film ended. Sweetie couldn't believe what she just saw, her sister murdering a pony. She curled herself up and started sobbing. Sweetie, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, said Twinkle with tears in her eyes. She curled up around Sweetie and both of them stayed there for hours. No, Twinkle, don't be sorry. We did nothing wrong, said Sweetie through the sobs. High up in her office, Rarity looked through the window. With blood-red mane and irises saw everything that was going on. Twilight came in and said, Are you really going to do it, Rarity? Process your own sister? Process my sister? Rarity turned to Twilight and said angry, Rules are rules, as they were set up by Professor Cosmos himself, the great-grandfather of Dr. Atmosphere. You know our ways, Twilight. I have been running the facility for five years now, and I do not want any pony questioning my line of work. Curse those pickets side for finding the facility, yet they kept their promise not to say a word about the facility when the factory was shut down. I still cannot believe we made that machine for them, all for their so precious rainbows. Twilight looked outside of the window as well and sighed. You are right, Rarity. They may be our sisters, but they failed their tests. They are unworthy. Good to hear you ha still haven't lost it, Twilight. Now go. I need to look into some files. Leave me alone for the next two hours, will you? Twilight nodded and went out of the office. She went to the floor and did her work. 
collect all the blood, tears, mixing everything together. She pulled on a glove and with two knives and started to cut an unworthy unicorn to catch all of its tears. You unworthy misfit, she said to the unicorn who slowly blacked out. Twilight did her job and went down a floor to her own room. Surprisingly, Trixie was waiting for her and she said, Hey, my love. Twilight smirked and closed the door and locked it. And will you help the unicorn race to live on? In the magic facility where no unworthy unicorn comes through? Horns and bones crushed by stones. Every pony remembers their names, but only a few know where to find them. Hopelessness is surely bliss, then add a little blood and ice and everything nice. After a couple of days, all the fillies in the holding cell were like nothing. Trixie had unleashed a mental war on them. That was one of her great points. Saying something that is going to happen. Soon. Something horrible. But it doesn't happen. It slowly made the ponies go crazy, but Sweetie and Twinkle kept their sanity and just waited. They had some plans thought up, plans for a main escape, but also, if something went wrong, they made a backup plan for everything. It was only the weight that was killing them. Do you think they'll ever get us out of here? asked Twinkle. They had to, otherwise we made the plan for nothing, said Sweetie. And when somebody speaks over the devil, he comes. Two mass colts tied all the ponies in the holding cell and brought them to the upper floor. The so-called death floor, as Sweetie and Twinkle liked to call it. The fillies were brought to a machine with a conveyor belt. Rarity stood by the window and nodded, giving the sign the machine could be turned on. This was it, thought Sweetie. Soon Twinkle's and her plan will go into action. Twilight and Trixie also came back upstairs where they saw the fillies. Trixie started to smirk and said, what you see here, unworthies, is the machine in which we do most of it. It works faster than the original ways, yet it does the same. Now the best part comes. Choose who goes first. Her. Place her in the front. She goes first. Sweetie hoped she was not talking about Twinkle, and luckily Trixie had, was talking about the pony behind Twinkle. The colts placed the filly on the belt, looked to Rarity and nodded, and colts turned on the machine. The filly screamed and cried but couldn't move. Her hooves held to the bell with blood-red magic. The bell brought her to the machine. Soon the scream stopped, and the tubes coming out of the machine colored red and transparent liquids. Bone was, he was heard being crushed. Now it was only a matter of a time. You probably wonder what is happening in here, right? Well, first your horn gets broken off, and syringes pierce your little tiny body and tear tubes, sucking you dry. Then we break every single bone. After you fall into a pit, straight into the boiler room, where they are standing ready to feed you to the fire, said Twilight with an evil joy in her voice. Rarity looked in the chimney, and after about three minutes, it was there, the bolt of magic from the first filly. She smiled at it. I love my job, she said with the light blinded everything for a second, but her blood red manes and irises shine bright. More ponies were placed on the belt, picked by both Trixie and Twilight all being processed into pure magic. Rarity stood there in her office, laughing as the magic shot through the chimney up in the skies. There were only four fillies left, under who Sweetie and Twinkle. It was Twilight's turn to choose. Her. She says she pointed to Twinkle. Twinkle was set on the belt. It was now or never, thought Sweetie. She concentrated herself hard, bit her lips, and soon an orb of green magic appeared. She raised her head and shot it through the whole floor, damaging the machine. Twilight, Trixie, and the Colts got all got not back from the blast. This made Rarity furious. She jumped through the window, landed on the ground, shattering it on impact, and looked at her sister with her blood-red irises. And now you can do it? Too bad! It's too late, sweetie! Blast or not, you will die right here today by my hooves! Said Rarity, full of anger. Sweetie and Twinkle ran away for their lives, only to be followed by a crazed Rarity who was out for blood. Trixie! Twilight! Guards! Make sure no pony else escapes! Kill them all if you have to! No pony leaves the magic facility! Twilight and Tri Trixie did their jobs, and a couple of guards tried to fix the machine. If that thing breaks down, we are buck tricked, said Twyla as she was expecting the damage. Shut up and come with me, Twy. We need to see how the others are doing, said Trixie as they went down to the holding cells. Sweetie and Twinkle ran all over the facility. They encountered other holding cells. More floors where unworthy unicorns were killed. They even came to the boiler rooms where it smelled like a death's lair. Strangely, no pony other than Rarity was seen, who was still chasing them out for their blood. Sweetie! She said, and above her horn, a blood-red orb appeared, blasting a powerful beam away in the direction of Sweetie and Twinkle. 
The two feared for their lives, but the blast didn't hit them. She did it a couple more times. Powerful blasts, which would drain a normal unicorn empty. But these blasts kept coming. Rarity didn't get tired whatsoever. She just kept blasting. They had the small advantage of being smaller and thus more maneuverable in the tight corners. They saw an open door, galloped toward it as fast as they could. Twinkle closed as soon as Sweetie was through it. They were on the, they were on another catwalk. Beneath them, dozens of little fillies and young adults. Sweetie and Twinkle jumped down to hide among the many ponies, begging them not to tell anything. All the ponies in the holding cell surprisingly agreed not to. It is the greatest thing that has happened to Equestria. Harvest the ponies who were unfit and remold them into a better thing. And by that we can fix the magic problem and increase production of everything by at least three times. Sweetie and Twinkle shivered in fear as they heard two doors going open. The doors on either side went open and there they were, Trixie and Twilight, inspecting the last holding cell. Both of the fillies made themselves as small as possible, hoping not to be seen. Everything is in order here, said Twilight. So it appears to be, said Trixie. And then with one loud bang, the whole door was blasted out of its place, and out of it walked Rarity. Her mane and iris could still be seen through the smoke of the blast. She looked down and said, They must be here! There is no other way out! They are mine! She looked at all the fillies in the cell, noticing two curled up balls. Two curled up balls she knew all too well. She jumped down, but instead of using her magic to stop her, she just landed on all four hooves, shattering the ground around it. Some of the ponies in the cell had the bravery or stupidity to storm Rarity, only to meet a quick death. Rarity literally ripped each filly apart with her magic, which cost her way of the two little balls. The rest of the ponies in the cell gave up. They didn't want to die. Not yet. They made way, revealing Sweetie and Twinkle. Rarity walked up to them and said no pony who enters the magic facility comes out of it. Her face was covered in blood, her coat wasn't white anymore, but red with a bit of white here and there. Trixie, Twilight, move away now. This is something I and I alone had to do. Move! Rarity demanded. Trixie and Twilight left in fear. In the five years she has been the head of the facility, they have never seen her this mad. Sweetie and Twinkle, you dared to fail your tests. And now, when I want to make you useful, you pretty much destroy the whole facility. I am not disappointed in the both of you. I am ashamed in you two, said Rarity as her voice became crazier and crazier. Sweetie and Twinkle slowly uncurled themselves and looked into the eyes of the monster. Rarity was exhaling steam at this point and made no time to go to waste. Her horn started to shine blood red and Twinkle was grabbed by it and slowly ripped to pieces. Leg by leg, slowly, painfully, Twinkle screamed and cried so hard, but it didn't work. Bones snapped, blood dripping on the floor, on Rarity, and with one last rip, all four of her legs were off. Rarity threw the dying Twinkle aside, who died when she hit the wall. Now it was Sweetie who got mad. She gathered all her guts and stood up. She looked right into the eyes of the savage beast that was once her sister. No pony leaves my facility, said Rarity angry. And nobody kills my friend, said Sweetie in anger back. Both of their horns had a glow around them. Rarity blood red, Sweetie a green color as her eyes. Both of them took steps back. Sweetie Belle, I challenge you to a duel to the death, said Rarity with a crazy voice, and I am happy to accept it. The both of them blasted their magic at full power. You made a big mistake, Sweetie. This is my facility and my rules. I am connected to it. Rarity looked to the scared fillies who wanted to escape but couldn't find a way out. Sweetie said nothing as the tears left her face. Sweetie felt she was almost drained of her magic. Rarity saw this and started to blast even more. Sweetie was running out, and there was nothing more she could do, only except death itself. As long as I am here, I have unlimited magic. The facility is running through my horn, said Rarity with a crazy voice. The beam of Sweetie's horn got weaker and weaker, until she stood aside. Now what is this? said Rarity, surprised at her seeing Sweetie stepping aside. Weakling that you are, said Rarity as she walked towards Sweetie. All the other fillies laid on the ground crying over what they just saw. Rarity teleported herself and Sweetie to her office. You misfit, unworthy unicorn, yet you refuse to die. I shall make a slow end to you. You are no longer my sister, Sweetie. No longer, said Rarity as she looked Sweetie in her green eyes. Twilight, Trixie, take her away. Personal cell. You know what to do. 
Twilight and Trixie looked at each other, and Twilight said, Rarity, you can't do this. Twilight, do not question my manners of working. Now bring her down there. No questions. Twilight brought Sweetie to a personal cell, where she was hung up by all four of her legs. She was left there for a couple of hours, until Rarity came in. I thought you loved me, Rarity. I am your sister. How could you? You, above all, do this to me? Asked Sweetie through the tears. There is a reason, Sweetie, why I wanted you to pass. To push you to make that blast. I never wanted you to make you fail. But you did it, and then the rules come into play. Every unworthy unicorn must be processed into pure magic for the worthy ones, said Rarity while Trixie and Twilight brought in a trolley with cutting instruments. It's a shame, sweetie. I really loved you as my sister, said Rarity with tears in her eyes. But still, you are unworthy. If you have any last words, say them now. Sweetie dropped her head and said, I'm sorry, every pony, that I disappointed you all. Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, please don't forget me. Applejack, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, please. Remember who I was. The tears started to roll out of her eyes as Rarity pointed a knife right at her heart. Are you done? She asked kindly. Sweetie nodded and felt a sharp pain in her chest. As I said, no pony leaves my facility, said Rarity in her normal voice. Rarity sat behind her control panel. Soon a new bowl would emerge. She sighed and chose which pony needed to get it. She went outside, stood on the cloud, and watched the magic facility. She smiled at the sight of it. She loved the smell. Not much longer, she thought. And there it was. The bolt. A powerful green bolt, heading straight for her. Rarity stood ready, ready to accept the blast. As the blast hit Rarity, she became more powerful than ever. Sparks of green magic went all over her body. She went back inside, but not to her office, to the floor where it all happened. She had a look around, stood there, and her horn shined, blood red. Every unworthy unicorn had their blood sucked out, through her their skin, the tears through their eyes. Rarity stood there, laughed, and started mixing before their eyes, until she dumped it all in the mixing drums. Rarity stood there, laughing at her powers. I am the facility. She went to her office, and sat there and looked at the many monitors, and started to laugh, maniac maniacally and started to sing a song, the song of the magic facility.